This is a cyber truck. This is a tank. And this is a cyber tank. So can we build a cyber tank using only what we find in this junkyard? Let's find out. There are five stages to building a cyber tank. Building the platform, engineering the mechanics, crafting the cyber cabin, installing an epic weapon system, and finally, testing it for real for real. But first things first, Today, we are back at the junkyard. Omar, why are we here? We need some metal for our project, and Jeff said he's got a little something for us. Jeff. Uh, how tall are you? 6'6". Six, six. So, Jeff. You look different. How you been? Slip Gotti video? Yeah, I did actually. It's got like over 2 million views now. So you could, yeah, you could, you could say that I've grown. But I mean, problems, right? Where it all began. Since we needed more space to build, I rented out this entire farm. There's actually specific dimensions that our platform needs to fit. It has to be 55 by 96 inches precisely, while also being able to support the full weight of our cyber cabin, our weapon systems, and our pilot. After 20 hours, we have officially finished building this platform. Stage two is about the engineering required to turn this into an actual drivable tank base. For starters, we're gonna need to install axles so that our platform can connect to wheels. Problem is, this isn't a car, it's a tank. So we're gonna need three different types of axles. First, we'll need an axle that's stuck in place to hold two tires at the front. Second, two axles that are adjustable so that later we can add tension to the tank tracks. Third, two axles that'll connect to the motor so that we can actually drive. Brandon, no. <laughs> oh. Now we're gonna flip this thing and add this motor and chain and see if these axles actually turn. Or yeah. we put up an ad in one of the local coffee shops that says there's an exciting new gym program that will guarantee a six pack, get people here, get them to do it for us, and then send them home. Oh. It's a gym program. Holy crap, man. Oh. My muscles are only for show. They're not meant to be used and abused like this. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Problem is, this motor and chain were never designed to power a tank. So to make this work, we have to build custom motor mounts plus add custom sprockets to get enough power through gear reduction. Okay, so we just finished adding the motor and chain. Now we're gonna see if it actually works. Look at this. Spinning the tire. And then we got a spinning chain. The motor and chain were connected, so next up. Now for my favorite part. We're gonna add the tires and the tracks. Now using the adjustable axle we installed earlier, we can stretch these tracks out so they actually have the tension to drive, but... Can this thing actually drive? The issue that I think might happen, on paper, these motors have enough beans to give, but I don't know if... Omar, sometimes you gotta fly before you can crawl. You know how every little kid, it's a big moment when they get their first bike. Imagine if instead of having their first bike, they had their first cyber tank. We could be onto something really big here, guys. <laughs> Do you have any idea what's the problem? Not enough beans. I think it is too little power. That's a lot of tires and tread for two electric motors. Can we cut this part out of the video? No. What if you were to ride it like this? Look at that.
Tanks were never meant to be environmentally friendly. They were meant to destroy the environment, along with everything else, aka Bruh. electric motors. But isn't it supposed to be That's why we're gonna use these two gas-powered engines instead. We spent an entire day swapping our electric motors with gas-powered engines, but then this happened. The tank still wouldn't move, but how could this be? We should have more than enough power. We carefully looked it over and eventually we figured it out. So basically it's like we get new clutches or we have to compromise in the design. That's where we're at. So we took another day to install custom clutches and finally we were ready for the drive test. Yeah, turns out building a tank is harder than we thought. We spent the next three days trying to get this tank to move, but nothing was working. Okay, so bad news. It's been four days of delays. We cannot get this thing to drive. Between the tracks wanting to fall off, clutches slipping, we've had so many issues and... We are out of time. We have to move on. It's not looking good, but hopefully we're going to figure out something to get this thing driving before it all comes together. Just like a real tank, no matter what the obstacles, we had to push on and move forward. <laughs> Why am I doing a bench press? I'm building my body, which is exactly what we need to do for the cyber tank next. First, we'll need to construct a metal skeleton that'll be the bones of our cyber cabin. Now that the skeleton is finished, we're going to install metal sheets that perfectly connect at each intersection and then just make it, you know? Those metal sheets are gonna be the same material that we're gonna use for the body of the cyber tank. Omar, how confident are you that these metal sheets are completely bulletproof? I don't know about bullets, but... Anyways, so I got three levels of weapons we're gonna test against this body. What? Can we bring out the real weapons? Level one, slingshot of death. Now I'm standing behind Steven for no reason whatsoever. Level two, paintball gun of death. You said you were confident that it's bulletproof, right? I don't know about bullets. Oh, right. Okay, so we got Omar behind the metal sheet. It's protecting your most vulnerable area, don't worry. Okay. But I'm still gonna aim for it. Okay. Bulletproof. Scary. Level three, totally legal fireworks. Okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't you into that? I wouldn't. Oh! Hey Omar, you uh, if I don't make it, tell my friends that I Say hello to my little friend. Oh my God, you scared? Welcome. Since the cabin is now complete, let me give you a little tour. Our bulletproof metal. As you can see, full tracks that can go over just about any terrain. Bulletproof glass to protect the VIP inside. You may be wondering, how does one get inside this cyber tank? Step up on the wheels? No, we're not barbarians. We've invented this ingenious hinge system that allows me to be protected from my enemies while still having a crystal clear view. And even in the dead of winter, we're not gonna lose battery. We've innovated. We've moved beyond electric. Full gas, baby. Two pedals down here, and that's actually how I can steer this tank.
You know what they say? Defense is boring. Doesn't matter how sturdy our tank is. It isn't complete without some badass weapons. Omar, tell me, how are we going to obliterate my enemies? Obliterate your enemy? <laughs> We're gonna obliterate your enemies by building a main cannon system that is modeled after a potato cannon. That's lame. We need to obliterate, obliterate my, my enemies. enemies. But what we're gonna actually use is these custom filled powder paint so that when you shoot them, they can explode. Let me see this. So I'm gonna be stuck in there reloading these things when I'm just getting destroyed out there. If you're looking for something a little more rapid fire, so on the side, we're gonna have turrets, two per side, that you're gonna be able to shoot. My question is, if I'm sitting inside the tank, how am I going to aim? So we've gotten some cameras that will be mounted beside the turret, and then you'll have live feeds from each side turret so that you're basically gonna lock on the target, and then you're gonna hit the button. Now, is that enough to obliterate your enemies? Behind this door is your cyber tank. I've been to myself just me lately. I don't need a lot. Yo. <laughs> yeah, this thing is ready for action. I just have one question, Omar. Can it actually drive? There's only one way to find out if this cyber tank is the real deal. You guys ready? Three paintballers versus my cyber tank in an all out war was what was supposed to happen. But on the day of the shoot, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. We were outside in the freezing rain for hours and our hope was fading out just like the daylight. This was it. I couldn't reschedule because I was out of time and money. All I want to do is make the best videos possible for you guys. And I failed. But I mean, this wasn't the first time I felt like a failure. What I'm going to do with you? I can't support you forever. Just so we're clear, if you drop out right before your exam, there's no going back. You know what? The only war is the one with myself. And sometimes when I try my best, I still end up stuck in the mud. That's life. But the only real failure is if I never tried at all. And besides, I'm sure I'll figure it out. As long as I stay on the right track.